Hey, what's up, guys? This is Marston here for Dope Eats. I'm in uh, I'm in Amarillo, Texas. This is me and uh, Rebecca's hotel room. Uh, what can I show you? We got Keurigs. You're you're gonna see all this stuff later. We got like a microwave and all that. So, uh, this is a very special episode. Um, Rebecca Morgan's with me. And she's, she's the real deal. She's a real lady. Um, she's an author, so we're going to do some stuff. Or I'm going to interview her for her book. That'll be later. So if you just want the sweet dope eats part of this which is you know you cook with me let's do that we're gonna do that first and then it's gonna be just a conversation with me and Rebecca a little bit we'll talk about her book we'll just talk about life in general I want I want you to think of it'll be like a conversation you know not really an interview but I fucking love her writing she's uh she's amazing and we're both in the in the same kind of circle so I got cowboy boots um, I got these because because of this I was thinking that cowboy boots are like um, like so I went to a flea market and there are all kinds of different cowboy boots and I was thinking I could start collecting those instead of like Nike's um there's just like there's just so many different kinds So oh, this is Jamie. <laughs> it's gonna be confusing because her name's Jamie, but it's also Rebecca. This is true. Yeah. Possible. All right. So. So today we're gonna cook like just start cooking right now. I think. Because we're gonna cook some ramen. Jamie's got some beer going. We got some beer. Which is Modelo. Why'd you, why'd you choose Modelo, Jamie? Well, it says Cerveza on it. Yeah. So I figured we're in Texas. Yeah. I should... And I didn't feel like tracking down any whiskey. Yeah. So they I didn't thought sell whiskey. this was comparable. Where did we buy it? We bought it at the Tough and the, Stop. The Toot and Totem. Yeah, we bought them at the Toot and Totem. And I had some cool ranch Doritos. Yeah, yeah, she, we were supposed to have some cool ranch Doritos. I already ate them. And she ate them. Yeah. <laughs> but I got a new tattoo. Yeah, show them the tattoo. It's a, it's a fat naked fairy with cowgirl boots on. Right. This is my muscle. I'm chopping wood. <laughs> so, let, let's start cooking. Right. What do we got? What do we got today, Jamie? Um, all right. Let's show the people what we got. Oh, God. Got two plastic forks. Yeah. Oh, shit. These are your icebreakers. Thank you. We've got chicken-flavored, very veggie cup of noodles. But I don't eat meat, so I'm not putting the flavor pack in. So she's not putting... Oh, we got to turn off the heater. Hold on. All right. All right. So we got some cup of noodles. Yeah. I figured we could make these because I eat them every day. Well, technically I eat ramen every day because it's yeah. 23 cents a pack. But right. if you steal it from Walmart, it's free. Yeah. And you've never gotten caught. No. No. I don't ever get caught. No, it's not going to happen. Um, yeah. So we got the very veggie here. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's got edamame beans in it. and Yeah, are they like soft? What, yeah, what they, they get soft. Like? Yeah? Yeah, once you heat it up. Yeah, okay, so we got edamame. We got some broccoli. Yeah. It's got um, small amounts of naturally occurring glutamates in it. Wow. Yeah. No MSG. It probably has MSG. It says no added MSG, so maybe um, there's already most MSG. Most things in have it. MSG in it, like Doritos. And that's okay. Yeah, MSG's, MSG's fine. fine. 
That's we're okay some, with MSG. That's some weird shit. We got 330 calories. Um, my Ensure mm -hmm. has 220 calories. I don't know what the ones I usually eat are, but one time I was in New Orleans and I made ramen for for this guy. Yeah. And uh, I put the ramen, I found a pot in a dumpster and I washed it out in a coffee shop and then I put three packs of ramen in it and I I got the coffee shop guy to give me a big thing of hot water mm -hmm. but then I wanted to steam the noodles so I put the sweatshirt over the pot. Yeah. But my sweatshirt got all right. wet. Yeah, I thought it was going to set yeah. on fire. Well, the pot was just full of hot water. Yeah. But everyone in the coffee shop thought it was pretty weird. You did it in the coffee shop? Yeah. You cooked you cooked something in a coffee shop? Yeah, I just boiled the water and then put it in a pot. Yeah. And I, then I dropped my sweatshirt in it. How did you cook? We still how did you it. boil the water in the coffee shop? They had hot like very hot water for tea. Yeah. Some people like to drink tea. Oh. Instead of coffee. So we did that, but and you it did turned it? Did out you okay. Like it? Yeah, it sounds romantic. We liked it. It was pretty romantic. And then yeah. we went and slept in our car. I like that. I saw a dog with a hat on that night. That night? Yeah. Hmm. Why? How is that possible? I saw it later and it didn't have the hat on anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would fall off. Yeah. Quickly. I was a little bit disappointed, but also understanding. Yeah. How does one put a hat on a dog? I don't know. It was just on there. It was like a, I don't know, some kind of like saint's hat, like a baseball cap. Hmm. I think that's the football team in New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. So they were, that was their team. Yeah. I like that the dog didn't understand that he was a Saints fan. Yeah. He didn't know. Mm -mm. And yeah, got rid of it. Yeah, we're going to make these cup of noodles. Um, okay, so how are we going to make the cup of noodles? I, I suggested the microwave, but you you came up with a better solution. I don't believe in microwaves. Right. So I was thinking we could just use the hot water from the Keurig. Sure. That's set up over there. Yeah. And put that in here. Right. That way we don't microwave our brains. Yeah, now, now what about the coffee that's already in the Keurig? You know what I mean? Because it's not going to come out just water. It's also going to be coffee water. We could do some flushing. We got to do some flushing. Yeah, we could flush it. Okay. But don't we don't want to pork each other? <laughs> what? Like, like you don't want to stand in front of me while I'm flushing. The, okay. Yeah. Flushing the coffee. Okay. <laughs> so, I think this. We're all connected. I think I got. Yeah, I got good enough battery. We can flush it straight into this cup. I'm going to show off my tattoo. Marston got yeah. his first tattoo. No, I'm not going to do it. Do it. Nah. You have to. All right. All right. I'm going to start flushing. Yeah, flush. It's not going to work. <laughs> It'll work. You want to bet it's not going to work. I've done this before. Right. See, now you've got to fill this with water first, though, Marston. Uh... Yeah. You gotta get close. Wow. Yeah. It's on your pet. Yeah. I got like... Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you sure are tall. Yeah. They'd probably I'm call you tall. a tall glass of water around here. Yeah, we're going to a gay bar. Do I'm really think, excited. Do you think somebody's going to call me a tall glass of water there? Yeah. Yeah. And then right. you can say, I've got a cactus tattoo. Okay, so this is the curry. We got, we got little. Um, I'm just gonna start it off slow with the. Well, I guess it's gonna take a while. Yeah, but that's like the theme of the show is that, like, it's all. Oh yeah, I guess most people cook yeah, real food. Yeah, sometimes they cook real food, and yeah. sometimes they skip ahead, and sometimes they just. I don't know what the third. It's hard to imagine them watching it. Takeout. 
They do something. Annoy or take out. Yeah, it's like it's like white white noise while they're yeah. doing something else. Well, first we're gonna flush it, and we're already starting to get some some flushing in there. We're gonna flush it, and then and then we can probably, depending on the size, just put the cup of noodles straight in to the. Okay, we're gonna have to trick it. Make it think it's ready. Yeah. Cool. We go. It's heating up. Yeah, I think we can just. Yeah. It's a perfect fit. It's per nice. actually meant for this. Genius. This yeah. is kind of reminds me of, you know, how Tesla. This is like a this is new basically innovation. Tesla. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the Tesla of yeah. cup of noodles. Yeah. Well, if you want to go ahead and fill this up with water, we're going to have to have more water. I can hear it making noises. It's sort of like a like a windstorm. All right, we've got more water ready for the actual thing. Yeah. Yep, there it goes. Yeah, that water looks fine. Yeah, it's looks crystal good. clear. Yeah, yeah it looks like water. It's gonna scream at me now. I feel like we could go straight into cooking. Can you fill this up with water? Yep. Cause you're gonna need some. We actually might need to have a couple cups on deck. Or we could, you know what? Wait, yeah, we do need a couple cups on deck because we gotta keep filling it up. Gotta put more water up here in the filler. This is one cup on deck. Alright, I pressed, I went ahead and pressed the, the button without you. Alright. And then you could use this. And then we'll, I think it'll probably take maybe two cups for each cup of noodles. Right. Chicken flavor. I don't know. Oh, it's got powdered chicken in it. And rendered chicken fat. Rendered chicken fat for flavor, I think. So I'm not actually going to eat this. But I'll eat that old sticky rice, and you can eat this. I threw away the food. Oh, it's you okay. Want the I old eat food? out of the trash all the time. Okay. Here you go. Cool. Yeah, just the other day I found the most fucked up pizza. When I was in a big city, I found yeah. blue cheese, mm -hmm. blue cheese pizza. I'd never heard of that dumpster? before. Yeah, it was in, well, it was like on top of the dumpster. Oh, so that's like free. Yeah, that's so like it's just like free pizza. Free tasty pizza. I figured these had some sort of chicken packet, but that's not the case. No, these are veggies. This is uh, chicken flavor. I'm going to rotate it. Yeah. So so Just what? To help disperse. Why aren't you eating? Why aren't you eating the cup of noodles? It's got powdered chicken in it. Yeah, but you're not a vegetarian. Oh no, I'm vegetarian. Oh, okay. I've been vegetarian for nineteen years. Okay, and why are you a vegetarian? I think it's fucked up to put like stuff that's gone through that much trauma in your body. And also, I don't think you should eat animals. But also, I think, yeah, it's just not good to put that. Like, if an animal's dead, then the last thing it experienced was, like, a bunch of trauma. And then you put it in your body and it freaks out. I don't think yeah. it's good for you. Yeah. It's like all that stress. You're eating all that stress. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to eat any stress. I'm already stressed. Yeah. All right. We got it. That, this, 
We're halfway there. Those edamame beans are gonna be good though. Are they? I'm, you're surprising me with the edamame beans. I love edamame. I love them too, but like for cup of noodles, I wouldn't expect them. Oh yeah. To be good. It's a little sweet. Sweet oh. crunch. Okay. I, see, that's why I was thinking they were crunch. Yeah, right? okay. yeah, it's a bit of a crunch. A bit of a crunch. Yeah. Now, this has twenty-five percent of your daily saturated fat and fifty percent of your daily salt. That's a lot of salt. Well, that is a lot of salt. Yeah. Mhm. Mm and that's for a 2,000 calorie diet, right? You ever had a salt lick? Uh-uh. What is it? It's like a little red cube. It's made out of salt. And you give it to your animals and they lick it. Aw. I wanted to get one for one of my girlfriends. Yeah. And make her lick the salt. Yeah. Because she likes salt. Aw. I don't like salt. No. It's too salty. Well, that's why you give it to your girlfriend. I like hot sauce. Yeah. Remember when we went to kitchen. Cracker Barrel? Yeah. You put salt on your eggs. Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck. I think it's going to overflow. It's okay. It's okay. Nope. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. I got real scared. Okay. Now, how long do we have to wait? Um, we should just do this. Yeah. Kind of steam it. Okay. Cool. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, looks great. I think it's probably the best it's ever looked. <laughs> you prefer this outfit than like its original just cap and lid outfit? Well, you could put the cap on like this. It's like a hat. Yeah, a noodle hat. Mm. Who else has been on on Dope Dope Beats? Beats? Yeah. Nobody. You're the first writer on Dope Beats. Whoa. Yeah. So there's that cute guy, your friend. He's very handsome. Yeah. What do you think about him? He looks like that guy from Pineapple Express. James Franco? No, the other guy. Not Jonah the fat Seawald? one. No. Jonah Seawald. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah Hill. No. <sighs> My friend's dog's named yeah. after him. He's very clean cut. Do you like the clean cut, like, Not all usually, American? but maybe? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a one night thing. With, yeah. like, an all American man. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know how long these should sit here, but you don't want to have crunchy noodles. Exactly. So, well, sometimes I, people like it. I'm pretty good at, 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 so you get the fork and then you just poke it. Yeah, you gotta do the poke. You yeah. wanna go ahead and give it a little poke? Nah, it's not ready yet. No? Okay. Just, we'll let it steep. Yeah. Steep the noodles. Well, what other things have you cooked on your show? We've cooked um, chicken and How'd mushrooms. How'd you cook the chicken? And sweet potato fries. Whoa. I like those. Yeah. How did we cook the chicken? Uh, we got some nice, some nice sautéed. We got some sauce for it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we we. Y'all didn't some make the sauce. Sautéed mushrooms. I don't think we made the sauce per se, yeah. but we did heat it up. I that think. Counts. Yeah. I'm a terrible cook. I'm a good baker. I can make the fucking best cornbread, but I cannot cook. But also, I'm a very good cook. I know. You I told just me. tell everyone I'm not a good exactly, cook. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like the secret's out because, like, you posted that photo of the. Yeah. I made this girl. Um, yeah. Fresh tomato and kalamata olive tapenade from her garden while she was at work. What's like the secret? Like, oh, I'm not a good cook, but then like you make that meal. Yeah. And it's like, damn. Like, yeah. Jamie can cook. What's? Do you have like a meal? I just like that? deny it. Yeah, but like oh, a meal, like my cooking meal, like a secret cooking meal. I'm a terrible cook. I know, and then like, what do you make me, <laughs> or what do you make um, your date? That's like damn, French that's omelet. Good. You ever had croque yeah. croque Suzette? <laughs> I've had omelets. Yeah, 
don't some know one of that. these some publisher guy made me an omelet a few weeks ago, yeah. but it was scrambled eggs. <laughs> but it was real good still. <laughs> and there was toast. Yeah. And I liked it. And there were strawberries. And in the omelet. Yeah, and I got to sleep omelet? in a bed that night, and it was really fun. Yeah. Because. What's your sleeping arrangements been? I just been sleeping on the floor. Right. Yeah, for like five months. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I'll sleep in a bed, but I've only slept in a bed like six times. How does it feel like sleeping in a bed? Like you're not on the floor. Yeah. It's, it's like so much just, better. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like this is way better than the floor. Yeah. But then I started sleeping next to my friend's wood stove on the floor. That's where it's at. That's but really their it. dog makes this noise sometimes at yeah. night. It's like... Yeah. And that shit just drives me crazy. I hate that. Me too. My mom makes that same noise. Yeah, it's like old people eating. Yeah. Like, why do they make that they, noise? It's because they're gumming it. Yeah, dude. They oh. gum their food. It's so gross. I hate it. Are you going to poke the noodle? There's a guy in AA who, like, brings in a sandwich, and he's old. Ew. He's, like, super old, and he just eats the He sandwich. should go to Sandwich Eaters Anonymous. Yeah, it's done. Are we going to AA in Texas? I want to. That'd be fun. Let's I'm do an, it. I'm an addict. I can go to AA. You, you are an addict. Are you? I don't think you are. I mean, by the NA standards, you're like always an addict. I guess I'm going to come sit in the bed. Yeah. Um, you can sit on the chair if you want. Off. Oh, I can? Yeah. Fuck you. I'll make it work. No, there's no way to make... Yeah, we can make it work. Yeah, it's we'll fine. make it work. Get this fucking... Get some mood lighting, Marston. The, yeah, this is bullshit. Put something on that. I wish Still we had bullshit. a little, like... A little red scarf, you know? <laughs> so it was, like, kind of sexy. Yeah. How many light bulbs? This is one big, huge fucking light bulb. Alright. Marston's gotten me addicted to vaping. Yeah. I'm just practicing saying that because I feel like I'm going to get picked on. You think, why? Are you vaping on the show? Well, I was about to ask you if I could use your vape. Yeah, you can. Because. Didn't you, you had it last. Did I pocket it? Yeah, you, it's in your pocket somewhere. It is in my pocket. Let's show, let's show how you use overalls too, because I find this very endearing. Oh. Well, this is my cigarette pocket, and this yeah. one I usually keep an extra magazine for my Glock 43. And, uh, sometimes I put other stuff You don't. In you just walk, like, you just walk around with the magazine, right? Well, it tucks in perfectly. I feel like it's meant to be in here. It's almost like a mag case. But yeah. it doesn't show. It just po it's just it's, in there. It just fits perfect. I almost got on the airplane with a mag in my pocket, and I had to go back to the car and put it away. Yeah, so you were going to bring your gun Yeah, I was going to bring my gun. And you didn't? No. I was like, I was like, no, it's, it's fine, like get over it yeah I want to talk about your book cool sounds um, like a cool thing to do how are those noodles they smell really good I haven't tried them yet I'm starting to regret having um having beer oh no not having beer what? um eating all the Doritos already yeah. Um. I can't see you. Yeah. All right. It's you're okay. basically like. You're like the dopest writer right now, kind of. I don't so know. I'm pretty shy. I'm yeah, but you're not shy in your writing. Yeah. This, these aren't questions. Uh, all right, so you're like, <laughs> you're like the dopest writer, 
right now. That's how I see it. And you got a new book. And a book. Yeah. Um. I read your Blood Burger book. Oh, fuck. Blood Burger Parade. You have mixed feelings about Blood Burger Parade. Well, I didn't really understand. To me, Blood Burger Parade was more of like an art project because I just took all these... Well, some there's some poems in there I wrote, but then... Well, I guess all of it's poetry, but... Yeah. There's a whole big-ass section that's like... It's like messages, like gross dude sent me. Yeah. On the internet, and yeah, then but, I but turned you, them. You flirt back with them. Yeah, so sometimes. Sometimes. I egg them on a little bit. Yeah. Did they send you money? Some of them. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> One man sent me some money to get a dress at Anthropology. And I was like, I was like, okay, cool. But then he was gross, so I just blocked him. And then... He was too dirty? He was really creepy. What does that mean? He was like, he was like, I want to do, I want to pretend you're in the stocks. And I'm whipping you. And I want to pretend, like, he was into, like, weird shit. Not, not even, like, like, I'm in, like into S&M and BDSM and sure. shit, but, like, yeah. he was into weird shit. Like, like, like rape. Like, rape shit, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I'm not down for that. So I just took his money. And then I did it again a few months later and pretended to be a different girl, because I was still mad. Why were you mad? Because he was gross. So you wanted, like, payback? Yeah. Over what? Sweetest Revenge. I don't know. What website is this? It was on Seeking Arrangements. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah. What is... He sent me some funny so messages. so many questions. What is Seeking Arrangements? It's a website for, like, sugar dating. Sugar dating. Yeah, but it's gotten blown up. It sucks yeah. now. It used is that to be the one cool. where it's like, I want 5000 a month? Yeah, and, and then you I date some, you. like, old guy. Yeah. Right, that's great. It used to be really cool. I'm a big fan of Seeking Arrangements. How do you feel about it? Well, it used to be really good, but then that girl was fucking that politician. You yeah. Lauren Ashley or something, and then it got blown what, up. What, are you talking about Trump? No. Um, Trump's probably on Seeking Arrangements. I don't know. There's no, there's no, okay, <laughs> we'll move on. Let's do anything but talk about Trump. Yeah. Whom I voted for. No, I'm joking. Um. I looked at the camera <laughs> <laughs> like Jim in the office. <laughs> <laughs> I, am I? I I can be Michael Scott. That's like the most flattering thing ever. Um. I okay, like, so seeking arrangements. Yeah. This is fucking. Amazing, you aren't seeking arrangements. What were you okay. asking for? Uh, I didn't have like really a set amount, I would just hang out. I just had one guy from there, yeah, but he was a big politician. <laughs> okay, yeah, was he really? Yeah, I went to a dinner thing in DC, and his car had all this police blocking shit in it, and we went almost 200 miles an hour because no one knew because he had all these like radar things and it was uh -huh. crazy and then I saw Eric Prince that contractor from Blackwater at the soiree thing and yeah. I was like I was like fuck who's Eric Prince he's the he's like a big up in in politics like dark money politics okay so you are in the he's basically in the underworld of yeah seeking for arrangement. a moment and I was just like, whoa, I'm probably going to get a hit put on me. Yeah. Okay. So, this guy, how did he take it too far? The guy, the other guy? Yeah. Just the with, other. like, weird rape play. Thing. Like, you're into weird He was just into weird play. stuff. And he wanted to do, like, race play, which seemed bad. <laughs> Is that, a, that's a thing? Yeah. Can but you, I feel like can you kink shame like 
race play? Is that allowed? I would. You would? I'd be like, that's fucked. <laughs> I'd be it's like, so oh fat. I love the idea of like kink shaming versus like like race politics yeah. fighting each other. Yeah. I was just I mean like So your race I don't think it's a kink. I don't think it's a kink to ask people to put on blackface. No. That's just fucked. No. <laughs> I was like, you're fucked up. No. Yeah. That's when kink becomes fucked, um, fucked as yeah. you say. Yeah. Seems like every you threw a woman carried at me. <laughs> no, I, it landed between <laughs> us. Alright. I feel like it's actually a bell pepper, I think. Anyway. You want to move on to something else? Maybe? I'm ha- I don't know. I'm Am having I boring fun. you? No, I'm having fun. Am I doing a good job? You're fucking killing it. Sweet. Alright. I need positive feedback. You're doing great. Constantly. It's <laughs> a huge character that's, flaw. That's something that I didn't know about you. And is that true? <laughs> it's like, because you don't come off that way at all. No, it's a lie. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, we were on the airplane together. We were. That was fucking cool. Wait, yeah. can I just make yeah. one point here? Yes. Okay, so, so there does seem to be a boundary with women, and probably with men, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Where it's like, this is a kink, and then it crosses that line, and it's like, this isn't a kink anymore. This is like fucking... Yeah. This is something else. The only things I could... I mean, there's, like, age play, which p- some people are into. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not saying, like, you're oh, into yeah. it personally, but I'm just saying, oh, in general, yeah. it seems like different women have oh, different lines. Yeah. Not that where they're like, this isn't a kink. I mean, I feel like... my. I think the only thing I could think of where I would kink shame someone is like race stuff if they were just being like racist shithead and then the rape play was just like i'm not into this i can understand like rape play stuff but i think it's it's not real rape play because it's still consensual yeah exactly so that's why i'm curious like why why was him like you being in the stocks i'm guessing this is like porn stocks and him whipping you like that's too much why is that too well, much? Well, he wanted me to be in blackface. <laughs> yeah. So that, so that, yeah, like, that was it. I it was, was like, weird. I was like, that's really fucked up, dude. Like, okay. just, and, but I didn't say that. I was like, I was like, cool, send me like $300 and I'll get a dress and we can hang out. Yeah. Because fuck him. Because fuck him. And then how did you get revenge on him? And then a few months later, I made another profile, and I was like, I was like, hey, and like did the whole thing again. (laughs) But it was really funny because he sent me a message, because I was like, you should send me some money and I'll get a cute outfit, (laughs) which was the second time I'd said this to this person. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, like I don't know, like this girl, you know, I sent her a ton of money before, and she just blocked me. (gasps) Oh. And I was like, I won't do that. That's horrible. And then I did it again. Oh. Because he's just a racist fuckhead. Yeah. Yeah. He said other weird You're pretty shit. political. I don't think we... I don't want to get into politics. Oh, or, no. We don't have to get into but politics. But you are politically active. Possibly. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so your, your hat says, all cops are bastards. Um, Allegedly. Yeah, we we were on a plane together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were on a plane, and they brought us mini pretzels and biscotti. You and then you... You ate the pretzels. I didn't eat the pretzels. You, I, you ate, like, mine, too. Like, you were hoarding them. No, I didn't eat them. I just had oh. them on my, oh. on my thing. Okay. And I hid them from you. Nobody really eats those pretzels. It's already dry in the airplane. I didn't want to get... Like dried out, eating dry food. Yeah. Yeah, but you feel dry on an airplane. Yes, dry air. Oh. We were on a brand new airplane. We were. When we hit that turbulence, I was like, I, mm-hmm. it freaked me out. Not because of the turbulence, but because they said it was a brand no, new no. airplane, and I was like, maybe this airplane's gonna freak out because it's never been through. Exactly, like a wing. Yeah. And just flies off. And then I was like, at least this air marshal's sitting in front of us. 
Yeah, that's weird. Like, what is the air marshal going to do if the plane comes apart? Probably shoot it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just shoot. <laughs> yeah, just shoot the just airplane. Shoot the wing flying off. Yeah, shoot the wing. <laughs> Mag like, dump. I, like, I feel like you feel like guns like just can solve any <laughs> <laughs> problem. I like guns. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I won't get all political. I I think guns are bad, but yeah. I think if the government has guns, we should have more guns as civilians. Right. <laughs> um, well, it's your show. It is my show. In the show. sense where this is my show, but you're the guest. I'm the host. So if you want to, you can talk about whatever you want. I feel like, you know. Well, I don't want to blow up the spot. Okay. Well, I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like. Okay, right to bear arms, like, gets us into some sticky situations sometimes. Yeah. You know what sometimes I mean? Sometimes things get sticky. Sometimes things get sticky. That said. I like some, sometimes when you like. That said, my mom lives alone. With her, Does she? Yeah, with her mom. Whoa. So my grandma and mom live alone, and they have a gun. And cool. Yeah, and they've what been. What type of gun do they have? Just a good one. A short one? Yeah. A long one? <laughs> like both. I don't know. So double. Yeah, it's one. It's a built-out like Glock. I think it's. A, you know what a bullpup? I think is? it's a revolver. It's not like a revolver, but you know the ones where it's like a cowboy gun. That's a revolver. Yeah, but it's not like as big as a revolver. It's like a little uh, baby revolver. Oh, it's probably a twenty-two. Yeah, twenty-two. Yeah. But it's bigger bolts than a twenty-two. Don't twenty-two bolts are like super small? They're pretty small. Yeah, yeah. it's a bigger. Whoa. That's pretty cool. Like a twenty two is not gonna go through. They should a door. get a different gun. Those guns are hard to shoot. Yeah. At people. Hmm. It's, good. it's okay. I'll teach her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should, because she she'd be interested in that, I think. But I'm glad that I'm glad she has a gun. Yeah. You know I mean? Totally. Yeah. Um. Sometimes I'm glad certain people have guns, and sometimes I'm like, I'm like, damn, I'm like, <sighs> don't shoot me yeah what should we talk about like oh let's talk about your book please my book okay please. my new book is coming out um allegedly in february with house of vlad yeah um it's called hotel alexander yeah which is the name of my husband but we're divorced, but not on papers, because I want to have health insurance. Yeah, you're separated. Yeah. Not even technically, but in reality. Yeah, you're not going back. Yeah, because I'm not really attracted to men, so it's weird right. to be married to one. Yeah. But we're still friends. Yeah. And I wrote this book I have a kind of about him. So this book is full of longing and lust. Yeah. I want to fuck Alec. It's not even like it's not even like I want to fuck. It's kind of like an apology. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's like uh, it's yeah. kind of well. It's, there's a whole backstory. Yeah. Elle Nash is writing the introduction. I think mm -hmm. she's she wrote um, a really good book. Oh, no, I read it. Yeah, animals eat each other. Yeah. It's really good. I know. It was on Oprah's. It was in an Oprah magazine. <laughs> That's weird. It was cool. Why is El Nash? Why is Oprah supporting El Nash? Some Illuminati shit or something. I don't know. I think El Nash likes the Illuminati, or is maybe into it. I don't I know. I feel like I feel like if you believe in the Illuminati, it's better to like them and like be on their team. Yeah. Rather than. I really like, like her. I'm really excited. She's writing the intro. Yeah, that's fucking. Dope. I also want to write an intro because. Because there's just such a backstory to, yes. the, to the conception of this book. Yeah. Because I read the book as <clears throat> a lot of longing, yeah. a lot of lust, mm -hmm. uh, limerence even, which is like obsessive. Yeah. You need Alexander. Yeah, it was like that because yeah. I sort of fled the country right. last year. Yeah. Fled the country and got sort of like granted asylum in Romania. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> which was weird. And so I was living in like rural ass Romania for nine months. And Alex was sort of supposed to come meet me or something. I don't know. It's complicated. But he didn't show up. And then I started dating this guy who was a writer and like a sort of like a peasant. Well, he was fucking other guys or other chicks, um, Alex. I think so. Oh, yeah. Alex was. Yeah. And I was. So we were sort of like open marriage. We had just gotten married when I fled the country, like a couple months ago. I thought you were married seven earlier. years. No, we had just been dating uh-huh. a long time, yeah. And so anyway, I like left, and then he never came, and then I was just like, all right, I'm going to live here in Eastern Europe forever because it's amazing, and you can like trade people cheese for stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it's great. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, like... But I started missing him a lot, but I think it was misdirected somehow, but also I still really missed him. Well, is it like you're 20% straight and 80% gay sort of situation? I think I'm just 100% gay. Yeah. But I just missed our connection and our closeness and our friendship. Yeah, just like intimately knowing someone, because it was really hard also to like feel like that in Romania like with me. They don't speak English I'm guessing. Yeah they don't speak English and I had to learn Romanian while I was there. I would spend like six hours a day studying because I couldn't function without knowing how to talk. Yeah. And then I met the guy that I was seeing over there and he could speak a bit of English And so that was, like, a nice connection. But, yeah, it's just hard to have, like, an intimate connection with someone where you don't have, like, a a similar language. Or at least it was for me. And then I started writing poems and doing a lot of poetry readings there in, like, Bucharest and stuff. Mm. And I was drinking a lot of vodka. (laughs) Which was crazy, because I'd never been, like, really into drinking, but Mm -hmm. it would snow, like, four fucking feet. And they'd send, like, people out into the streets with, like, homemade brooms to sweep the streets. Yeah. But the snow would pile up anyway. And so you'd just sit in your house, and I would just, like, drink a ton of vodka, yeah, and listen to Leonard Cohen and Nina Simone. (laughs) And you'd write? And write, yeah. For, like, one time I wrote for 17 hours straight. Yeah. And it was crazy. I was so drunk. (laughs) And then, but I don't think, like, drinking should be a catalyst for, like, literary creation. So I would just end up trashing everything I wrote because I wouldn't be happy with it being, like, some drunk-ass Bukowski shit. Like, yeah, that's not what the book is. Yeah. So good job. Yeah, it's like real hard. It's very tight. Yeah. Very tight. Oh, and short, simple. And yeah. it tells a story for the most part. Every poem tells a story. Yeah. You understand? And, and Brian did a really good job with the layout. It's yeah. a really funny story, also, with how the book is finally being published. Because I was supposed to send my final edits like six months ago to. Brian Allen Ellis. Yeah. He's the publisher. Yeah. And I printed all the poems out and I started trying to arrange them. Like I laid them all out on the floor, except the floor was outside because I was in my, out on the farm. And, and then I was just like, fuck this. Like it's mm. so much work. Uh-huh. And I, I just fucking shot it with my gun yeah. <laughs> and I took like my shotgun and I started shooting all the pages that wasn't your only copy no Good. No, there was like a copy on a hard drive okay. but I was just like this is so difficult you pissed off yeah cause I'm not good at like I couldn't figure out how to like puzzle it together and like put them in some kind of order but Brian oh yeah and then I put it on twitter I was like I shot up my manuscript ha 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 and then Brian Allen Ellis emailed me and he was like, he was like, what the fuck? Like, just send it to me. And I was like, okay. But you have to like 
put in extra work because I don't have the capacity to like arrange these poems in any kind of comprehensible sequence and he did it really quick and it's super nice I mean I really like how it like reads how like that little vat of Alexander poems are right at the end like, oh I haven't gotten to the end oh it's a secret but they're there and it's real nice I have like yeah. this fantasy of Alexander. Yeah. It's just yeah, you know, it's like the book Alexander. Yeah. And it's like fuck I want like you. Yeah. This I'm you and it's like I'm one Alexander. Yeah, he's real sweet. He's really a great guy. I don't think so. He's probably real sweet and also a real dick. I think we're all dicks. Me. I mean I you know. told me he was an asshole to you. Sometimes. But I mean, I was kind of a crazy bitch and like yeah. left the country and yeah. and made out with this girl on our at my bachelorette party and it hurt his feelings. Yeah, that makes sense. But she was real hot. Yeah. Her name was Rizzo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is my favorite dyke name. So, what are the rooms? What's that? How is that oh, yeah. organized? So the book, I'll just explain cool. it. The book is arranged, I think, in three parts mm -hmm. with uh, each poem being a room. Yeah, each poem's a room. Um, I don't know who came up with that because someone helped do book stuff with Brian Allen Ellis, but I'm not sure who it was because I forgot what is it what is I don't understand why are they it's rooms? like hotel rooms oh because it's hotel it's yeah it took me a second to realize yeah, that okay. but um yeah I thought that was cool instead of chapters it says like the room numbers and I feel uh, like a cheesy interviewer would now ask are you ever gonna stay at Hotel Alexander again oh my <laughs> gosh I mean he just sent me a message and I was like and he looked really cute in this selfie. He did. I he sent. looked really cute in it. He sent me a very, very handsome fellow. Yeah, he's really handsome. He's like kind of super tall and really sweet. He's yeah. in a band. Oh. Yeah, it's a really good band. Yeah. It's called True Spirit. They're in, like on tour right now. That's cool. But I don't know. I don't. I think. I don't know. I'm not good at thinking into the future. That's why I get myself into these, like, conundrum ass situations. It is so confusing, your love life. My love life is literally hell. <laughs> hell. Okay, I'm listening. I was going to say shut up, but no, I'm, I'm listening. Oh yeah. my god, Marston. It's hell. But I'm sort of the devil, so I love hell. But also, it's just hell. But also, it's hell. I mean, you're still in hell. Even I'm if you're in the devil. hell. I'm in literal hell. Yeah. Like, the devil is in hell. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But it's also really great and exciting and fun. Yeah. And, and you get to make cute girls fresh tomato tapenade. Yeah. And then yell at her to be like, I was like, I was like, I said her name and then I was like, mm -hmm. you go to the bakery and you get a fresh french baguette yeah and she was like okay wow yeah. and then we toasted it a well, bit what made some like toast being points. a top can be like really fun yeah because it's like just do do this yeah now. And i'll then be like do, do it. this thing yeah and they're like oh. yeah and it turns them on yeah just to like because they get the for you. they have the privilege to right. do the thing yeah but i'm That's like fun. real sweet too yeah but yeah my love of life's in hell, but I just got an apartment, Yeah. which is awesome, because I've been living out of my car for five months. Yeah, it's weird, because there's, like, a camera here, so, like, I know you've... Yeah. I know your whole story, you know what I mean? Yeah. These but people don't these people shit. don't know. So <laughs> yeah. you've been homeless. Been homeless. Um, not as badly homeless as I've, like, been in the past. I haven't been homeless in a long time. There was like a bout of homelessness when I was like in my late teenage years. But yeah, I sort of just like left Alex again for the second time because I ran away from America yeah. and then I came back. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to finish that story. So. Yeah. Is Would this all be in Skipping Hotel back. Alexander? 
Like, is this what it would be? Kind of like your love life? Yeah. You sort don't of. know? You're thinking about it? Yeah. I mean, the poems are sort of like, like, there's an, there's a I'm sorry poem. That's my, I just ended that one. Yeah. Fucking, Where I'm like, please, so like, I could read it. Yeah, please know. read it. It's good. I don't know how to access it. I got it right here. Cool. Yeah, you can pull that up. I don't know. I just felt like real fucked up and bad about how things ended with us. And then I came back to America, which I had not planned on doing. Hence my massive credit card debt. Because I got all these credit cards. And I was like... Baby pigs hit an apology? Yeah, this one. Yeah. This poem's called Baby Pigs Hit an Apology. In lonesome head and body, my dreams show me what could be. I can do whatever I want when I dream. Blow my brains out across a cornfield in Nelson County, where we tasted all that hospitable summer wine. And the buzzards came, and the buzzards take my brains, and the buzzards arrange my brains in the blood between the furrowed soil. And the buzzards move big chunks of head, flesh, and clumps of my hair. With pointed beaks, they work the land. My corpse, they spell out, Alexander, I am sorry. <laughs> so there's that poem, and then there's another poem about being sorry, but it's at the very end. It might be the last poem. A lot of your poems... Okay. Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> there's you another say? I'm sorry poem. Yeah. But okay. I think it's at the end. Okay, there's like a lot of like play with line breaks. Yeah. How did you learn to do that? I know literally nothing about writing. Yeah. Everything I do is just like shit that I think is cool to do. Like mm -hmm. I personally just like doing it. How did you learn to um capitalize in space for emphasis like just one word like I'm sorry Alexander capitalize oh, I just like is it. capitalize in space. It's sort of left over from my like early 2000s late 90s like Zanga website where I would just like I would write something in all caps and then take three spaces and then write something in all caps and do three spaces like web 2.0 type is coding Is this like live shit. journal or something? Yeah, it's similar to live journal. That's so dope. And I just kind of kept that and put it in my poems. I love it. Like whenever I see capitalized letters in writing it's just it's like more powerful to me yeah like but you can't I mean yeah I just love it it's, and yeah I it. like it's it cool. a lot too yeah and uh yeah I'm really excited to have this book come out and the cover is really cool so what is like the goal of the book I mean I kind of took it as like perfect timing yeah. In the sense that your life, like, you're in a transitional period. Yeah, totally. And coming of age, sexual, not even coming of age, but, like, sexual identity. Yeah. New sexual identity, new life. Yeah. Where the fuck are you? In North Carolina? Yeah, I'm, like, up in a holler in North Carolina. You got an apartment, you were home, like, yeah. you know, just this whole transition, and then you come out with this book about, like, your ex-husband. Yeah. It's pretty wild. He was just texting me the other day. He was like, saw your books coming out. Interesting timing. Yeah, and I, I said like, it was like, yeah. actually, it's the perfect timing. Yeah, exactly. I was also like, it's perfect timing. Because, like, I mean, shit falls apart, and that's okay. And, yeah. like, I think we, I think the whole thing of, of being like, I'm going to marry you and be in love forever is just crazy. Yeah. Like, what? I think a lot of my poems and, like, short stories, like, kind crazy? of play with the idea of forever. Because just as a concept, forever doesn't make any sense. Well, it's, like, for your life. At least for me. Yeah. I'm like, That's why. I might die, like, yeah. tonight. I don't know. Well, then that would be... So there's no forever for me. Right. And so then, it has to do with mortality? I guess. Or just, like, things ending. Or, like, I don't know. Forever just seems crazy. Yeah, like literally forever seems crazy. Yeah. yeah. When I hear that, I hear, I'm going to live with, be with you for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I feel like that still sounds crazy to you. Yeah, that still sounds <laughs> crazy to me. I'm just like, what if I change my mind? Yeah. 
I don't know. I don't it like. It is. It's really stressful. I don't like stressful. lying, and I don't like promising things. I can't. Yeah. Guarantee won't be like broken. Yeah. So being like, I'm gonna love you forever, just is like grossly inadequate to me, and like. So you're lying. Yeah, it's a lie. (laughs) But I don't think I'm, like, jaded. I think it's just... I'm, like, very logical. Logical thinker. Yeah, I mean, based on (laughs) reality, it's like maybe nobody can really promise that. Yeah, Unless they're a very rare kind of person. Yeah. Based on divorce rates and shit. Yeah. Can we talk more about your book? Totally. Um, I just... You could ask me questions, because I'm bad at talking questions. about myself. Um, I don't know if I have any questions. Like, I just kind of want to rant about how good it is. Thanks. Like, um... I'm probably one of the worst people to, like, have a book come out. Because I'm, like, terrible at accepting compliments, and yeah, I'm, like, kind don't of... believe it. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, this person must be, like, something wrong with them. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, what are they talking to me for? But it's not, like, a self-esteem thing. Like, I, I, I like my own writing, but I'm just like, how do they know, like the backstory to every poem I've written, because I can never read my poems as someone who doesn't know, like, the secrets behind them. Yeah. So I can't see the, like, the pureness or whatever, like, I don't think they are pure. I mean... Yeah. Or, like, like, the... I mean, there's a lot of, like, danger. A lot of rattlesnakes. A lot of snakes. I love rattlesnakes. Yeah, there are a lot of snakes. Um, in the sense where it's like, there's a line where it says, you know, the snakes are, don't forget snakes are delicate. Yeah. I mean, it feels like to me, there's like, I'm a snake, I'm gonna fucking bite you. Yeah. Um, I got a snake tattoo. Yeah. So, they don't. They don't come across as, like, a goody-two-shoes writing it, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely A Christian not. girl didn't write it. I think there's some poems about me just being, like, a junkie and shit, too. Where I'm just like... Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Hearing that, because I... Oh, did like, you I not completely know that? For, I, yeah. You told me a long time ago, but you were, like, you were into heroin for... Yeah, it was, like, pretty bad off on heroin for a long time. And you fell in love with an addict. Yeah. What is that like? Falling in love with an addict? Literal (laughs) hell. Everything's hell, but that was, like, really hell. Especially because then we would just both be, like, so fucked up. Like, I think we fucked, like, one time in, like, six months. Because we were just, like, both so high. Yeah. But I haven't done that shit in a really long time. I think it's really important to, like, have that perspective because, like, you read Cherry... Yeah. You read every, you read train spotting, like every single um, book on drug use. And my friend yeah. sent me this too. It's like, fuck, I wish I would. My friend said, I wish I was an addict. Yeah, exactly. So then I could have a, an addict girlfriend because it's like. Yeah, so it's nice. so like romanticized. Yeah. And like in that movie, uh, Candy with Heath Ledger. Yeah. Like. It is like that, though. I mean, yeah. it's not fake. Like, right. laying in a bathtub, nodding out with your, like, lover is, like, so fucking sexy and awesome. But it's also horrific, because usually one of you or both of you end up dead. <laughs> yeah. Like, my, one of my ex-girlfriends is dead. And, yeah. uh, it's just fucking horrible. That shit's crazy. I just gave, a. Uh, a couple writers in West Virginia, a bunch of Narcan <laughs> to like, it's an overdose prevention drug. And so it, your friend, your writer friends are still using? No, they're not using, but they're oh. like teachers. So I was like, you should have this in your classroom. Yeah. I bet some of your students are like on this shit and they might, you know, fall out in class or something. And then you can save them. But 
Yeah, but that whole trope of, like, the addict and their lover, like, and all the, like, shit that goes with it, and, like, having to, like, sell your washing machine or whatever for dope, like, it is kind of sickly romantic. I, I still definitely see that. the romantic Yeah, part of it. it's really romantic, but it's also, like, I would never wish, like, the heartbreak I've felt, like, losing the majority of my friends to heroin, like, onto anyone. Yeah. But I do have, like, fucking shitloads of romantic-ass stories. <laughs> but I would, I mean, it's nothing I ever write about, because I don't want to, like, exploit that yeah. horror. You once told me that you could never fall in love. Yeah, I feel like sort of incapable. I don't know if it's because I have a wall built up or like what, but I also just want to be like in love like so bad all the time. Like you want that. Like limerence is a word where it's like you're completely obsessed. This person is almost everything to you. That's what you're looking for. Or that's what you can't feel. I feel... Like, Alexander, like, loved me, like, so deeply. Like, my friends would be like, oh, my God, I saw your husband looking at you, and he, like, loves you. Mm -hmm. And I would just be like, I don't know. It just didn't mean that much to me. I would just be, like, confused by it because I don't have, I feel like, I don't know if it's the timing or what, but I don't have the capacity in me to, like, feel that way yeah but like I really love my friends like I would die for them but like I don't know I think I just have a fucked up view of what like being in love must be like I think we all do yeah because I don't want some like codependent relationship like I love like being alone but also it's so nice to just be with someone you like care so deeply about yeah. And yeah. I don't know. I'm I guess more like I'm just scared of having my heart broken cuz it sucks. Yeah. It sucks when like you're a broken person and then you meet someone and you feel better and it's so beautiful and like you like fill each other with like good feelings and then like by no fault of your own it just doesn't work out no fault of anyone's like right. it's just not meant to be somebody like, doesn't care enough. oh yeah like so devastating yeah. like and you but it kills it, but me. i know you felt that yeah but you've just now i'm just like wall yeah <laughs> uh, i'm like fuck that like yeah. not again <laughs> 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 like you fooled me <laughs> <laughs> not again <laughs> Cause like that shit sucks. It sucks so much. I agree. Yeah, but also I'm down to like bring that wall down and just like be totally wrecked. Like, I'm, yeah. I feel like I'm either like screaming from a rooftop, like wreck me. One day you're like, yeah, you're gonna be like fucking wreck me. Yeah. Yeah. Right I now, feel right like now I I'm, do like, that I'm like sometimes. not not open to being wrecked. Yeah. I feel like I've been wrecked a bit mm-hmm. this summer I got wrecked but I'm like just mm. now noticing and I'm like fuck like I got wrecked too I'm trying to like, oh I'm trying to slow down the wrecking <laughs> thank you for the oh I, I appreciate the sympathy um you, what did you say about wrecking I'm trying to like slow down the wreckage cause I know like it's coming <laughs> Yeah. Or I feel like it's coming. But also, I'm just like, fuck. Like, I still want it so bad, I don't care. Like, I'll just be, like, miserable and die. <laughs> but then I'm like, I have the power to just walk away. But also, I don't, because I'm just trapped. And there's, something, <laughs> there's something screaming in me that's, like, to say, the people that we that wreck us are like not like it's not that they're not good people but they can't they weren't the people that we should have been wrecked by i think that there's a way to like choose yeah like this person's like 
fucking dope. Yeah. Healthy. I'm like okay at getting wrecked by this person instead of just being like fucking wreck me like yeah. anyone. Yeah. And I think most of us That's go so through cool. life. I think most of us go through life just like fucking like anybody can wreck me. Yeah. And we need to be like more. I think the people that the person that's sort of like weighing on my heart right now a bit is like a really wonderful person and I probably fucked it up somehow and I'm not I'm I mean I know like some or whatever I don't know I don't think they're a bad person at all yeah I think sometimes shit just doesn't work out yeah but I had these delusions that it would and then I'm like fuck I'm stupid <laughs> Like, god damn, jam, get it together. <laughs> um, I kind of, like, do you have anything you want to talk about with the book? Yeah, I mean, all of this is kind of in the book, like, hidden in the, in the... Like, we both talk um, about love, yeah. you know? Yeah. And And we're both good at it. Yeah, but, but I think most of I my writing is a, is like the this is just hidden in like or like coming out of some like deep grieving thing, whether it's for like the landscapes around me or like like um, cause I'm from Appalachia, so like the fucking mountains are just getting destroyed and like there's like pipeline fights and shit, and it's just like people's homes are getting ruined and I'm like grieving it and then there's like all these like cuties I'm grieving <clears throat> and then why are you grieving it feels like you have a yeah pretty solid handle on your cuties except for some of them, some of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I don't know I think I'm just like really raw yeah or something I don't know Anyways. I care too much yeah, can we talk about, like, the, you have this whole, I mean, you're like a southern writer, <coughs> but it's not fair to say that, but it's just like your life is completely different from yeah. mine and yeah, totally. most people's, Yeah. and you, like, use that in your writing. Yeah, I definitely see people nowadays, like, trying to write, like, about the south, like, I grew up on the Alabama border. And I've lived the last, like, like, 17 years of my life in Virginia. In, like, southwestern Virginia. And, like, shit's just different. And then I see these writers from, like, wherever coming in. And they're, like, writing about biscuits and shit. And I'm just like, you don't get to fucking do that. Like, you don't, you don't have that fucking, like, heartache of seeing, like, a straight up clan rally like yeah. or like your friends be murdered in front of you by literal like fucking neo confederates and shit like yeah. you don't get to write about biscuits you I feel like they're tourists yeah I feel like they're yeah. like trauma tourism or like I don't know I feel like trauma tourists are they writing yeah. about like f the fucked up parts of the south I feel like they're exploiting parts of the south that are vulnerable and like yeah. special like in my heart, like, 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 every spring I can the fuck out of some dilly beans, like, green beans and stuff, and mm -hmm. then I see these writers coming in from other parts of the country, and I just feel real protective of, like, my, like, southern heritage or whatever, mm -hmm. and, like, mountain heritage, yeah. and, like, I just get real aggressive about it and shit talk it. I'm like, I think there's more of like a southern identity. Because yeah. like with Lana Del Rey coming to like Lana Del Rey yeah. came to LA. Yeah. She writes about Marina Del. Yeah, Marina yeah. Marina. But yeah, it bothered my ex girlfriend. It I just yeah, it's the same shit. It's yeah. Like that doesn't belong to you. Like right. it's all we have. Like yeah. especially as like a southerner. Like like I don't have access to fucking like good health care or like you know, all this shit that's, like, more prevalent in, like, big cities or up north or, like, whatever. Like, yeah. all I have is fucking collard greens. Yeah. Don't fucking come to 
the South or Appalachia and write about collard greens. Like, yeah. go fucking write about Planned Parenthood or something. <laughs> like, yeah. go write about this shit in your city that's, like, that you're close to somehow. I'm like, like, all I've got to write about is, like, my garden. <laughs> Uh, and then I get real annoyed. But also, I'm glad they're right. coming here and like, I hear you. and like bring in, trying to bolster the culture or whatever. But also, th- there's just seems to be like a lack of respect right now with a lot of writers who are like trying to write like you do. Like everybody <laughs> wants to be like a southern writer right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that? super annoying because I'm like, <laughs> like. Hi, like I'm, I'm actually from the South. Like, can I have like money to write about it? And then I've seen like <laughs> grants be given to people from like fucking California or wherever. Yeah. And I'm just like, what, what, what is this? Your cowboy hat's so good. Thanks. It's really good. Um. I'm really excited to go to the gay bar tonight. Yeah, that'll be fun. Let's, like, close it with the gay bar. Yeah. What's going to happen? What can we look forward to? At the gay bar? Yeah. Um, well, there's a place here in Amarillo called 212, and they've got drag shows, yeah. which I love. Yeah, I love and then drag shows, too. there's, I don't know, there's probably some, like, Cute dykes. Cute dykes. Yeah. yeah. No. Interested to check that out. Mm-hmm. I was on Tinder earlier, and I was. A oh, bit now we have to close on out. your Tinder life. Oh my God, my Tinder yeah. life. Like rural ass, <laughs> rural ass Wi-Fi networks plus Tinder plus being a thirsty slut is like <laughs> devastating. It's just nothing but disappointment. You don't let it affect your ego, do you? Sometimes I do, cause really? yeah, cause like I'm not that feminine, and then there'll be like some of my like queer like feminine friends will have like they're like oh my god I have so many matches and I'm like damn I don't have shit like <laughs> but there's a secret which is gas station queers yeah it's great so lots of gas stations in the south have like just like huge dykes working at them and it's amazing so i can always just fall back on the gas stations yeah and then (laughs) you're gonna work at a gas station i really want to work at a gas station more gas station queers yeah i really want to work at a gas station because i really love gas station coffee and i like the gas station lifestyle yeah I think it'll be cool. And this girl said I can bring my gun to work. Right. Which would be cool. But I'm super excited for the gay bar tonight. Because we don't have a gay bar. Like, I don't even know where the nearest gay bar is in North Carolina. Like, I have no idea. It's, like, Mm. literally hundreds of miles from my house. Mm. Uh, So that'll be cool. And then... It's funny, though, because the last gay bar I went to was called 216, and the one we're going to later is called 212. Okay. it's funny to me. All right, well, I'm going to go. Okay, bye. Um, It's great (laughs) to meet you. Yeah. Thank you, Rebecca Morgan. Yeah. Buy your book. Um, It's like, I mean, it's fucking really good. Thanks. I'm glad you liked it. All right. Bye, people. Later, bitches.